Carl, please. What? Say something. Something that I can write down. The Communist League is waiting for this manifesto. You must get it done. When is the deadline? The deadline was last month. That's why I brought you here to my rooms to get you to work. Work? I don't work. I think I'm an intellectual. Carl, please. Wait. I have it! A specter is haunting Europe. The specter of communism. Excellent. That's excellent. All the powers of old Europe have entered into a holy alliance to exorcise this specter. Pope and Tsar, Metternich and Guizot, uh, French radicals and German police spies. A little slower, please. <clears throat> the party in opposition that has not been decried as communistic by the more advanced opponents in power. Where is the opposition that has not hurled back the branding reproach of communism against the more advanced opposition parties, as well as against its reactionary adversaries? Paul, slow down! Whew. Well, you're definitely an intellectual. Who could that be? German police spies. We're in Belgium. Belgian police spies. We must hide ourselves. Come in. Marianne. Marianne. Yes, Carl. It is I, Marianne. Monsieur Engels. Good evening. Good evening, Mademoiselle. <clears throat> what is the meaning of this? What are you doing here? I am here about my birthday dinner. You remember it's my birthday. You remember you promised me dinner. You told me to meet you at the Blue Moon Cafe. I went to the Blue Moon Cafe. I wasn't even late. I might have come late, just to make you wonder if I were coming at all, at least a little. You know, I used to do that in the beginning, but not now. There's no point now. Besides, I was hungry. Yet when I arrived, did I find Carl waiting for me? I did not, nor was he there an hour later. And so I thought, perhaps Carl is being Carl. And instead of keeping his promises, he's off. <laughs> Thinking deep thoughts. World-changing thoughts. But where would he do that? Where does Carl like to be while thinking his profound world-changing thoughts? Huh. Why? With Monsieur Engels, of course. And that is why I have come here, about our dinner. Your birthday? Of course it's my birthday, you fool. We talked about it last night when you came to visit me in my room. Marianne, Herr Engels is right here. Monsieur Engels is aware I'm your mistress. He has known for some time. You have? What do you have to say for yourself? Well, I... I must take the blame for this. I have been after Carl for days now to finish this manifesto for the Communist League. He is long past the deadline. I'm not surprised. That's not fair. Ending the oppression of the workers is not as easy as you think. Apparently easier than remembering my birthday. You are right. My apologies, Marianne. I have been a bore. Let us go and celebrate your birthday now. You can't go now. We've just started making progress. I promised Marianne. And you promised the Communist League. It doesn't matter. I have no intention of going with you to celebrate my birthday now. I have no intention of celebrating my birthday with you ever again. You're gonna stop having birthdays? No, you fool. I'm done with you. Finished. Finished? I'm ending our affair, Carl. I should have months ago. I'm doing so now, once and for all. But what will you do? 
there is another gentleman who appreciates me more than you, and he wishes for me to become his. There is? There can't be! There can be? I mean, Marianne, my lips to shut, my dearest sweetheart, you mean everything to me. Not enough for you to remember my birthday. For goodness sake, will you stop with the birthdays? Birthdays are just a bourgeois convention created to distract the proletariat from their oppression. But Marianne, does this mean... Yes, Frederick. Does this mean what? Carl, I did not wish for you to find out like this, but I am the other gentleman. What other gentleman? The one for whom I'm leaving you. Friedrich? But you can't be leaving me for Friedrich. And why not? Well, he's... he's Friedrich. I beg your pardon? I mean, he's my compatriot, my comrade, in the struggle to liberate the masses. He's also far richer than you, and he loves me. You do? I do, I must confess it. Well, I can't blame you, but really, Friedrich, stealing my mistress is so bourgeois. I love her. And I love him. You do? Well, enough. This is impossible. Marianne, you are essential to my work. You are my inspiration. Through you, I witness and come to understand the suffering of the proletariat. I work in a dress shop. Close enough. You must not do this. Do not desert me. Now I'm in the process of creating the founding declaration of a movement that will change the world. You're always claiming you'll change the world. I don't want to change the world. I want to be with a man who remembers my birthday. Friedrich, will you talk some sense into her? I don't think I can be objective here. But you know how important our work is? Of course I do, but look at her. She's an angel. Angels don't exist. It's a metaphor. This is a terrible dilemma. If I am to articulate the basis and governing principles of communism in accordance with the tenets of dialectical materialism, I must have peace of mind. I must have Marianne by my side. But Carl, now that I know that she loves me enough, I must have her by my side. Terrible dilemma! It's not a dilemma at all. I've made up my mind. Wait! I have it. Yes? Communal property. I'm not following. Please explain. We will share her. Share her? Yes, of course. Just like the masses will share everything in an ideal society. Are you out of your mind? Don't you see, Friedrich, just like the means of production, Marianne will belong to us both. To everyone. Everyone? Well, not everyone. I got a little carried away. She will belong to us both, and we will share her. Will that keep you working so we can finish this manifesto? It will. It will free my mind so I can think the most world-changing thoughts. Enough! I have no intention of being shared. I'm a person, not an object, not a thing. I will not be shared. The arrogance of you men. Our arrogance is based on a scientific examination of history. The private ownership of property is the basis of all class oppression. Property? That's excellent, Carl. Hold on, let me get that down. The private ownership of property. Friedrich, do you accept this? Well, I can see the logic of it from a historical perspective. Men uh, and... I'll have nothing to do with a man who could entertain such ideas. But Marianne, we must all make sacrifices for the revolution. Think of the masses. Friedrich is right, the masses. Heaven help the masses, if they ever listen to fools like you. Goodbye to both of you, forever. Oh, Marianne! Where were we? I, I, I don't know. Um... <clears throat> Leave me back that last part. Mm. 
What's wrong? I don't feel much like working right now. 